first of all, man, I hope, I, hope uh, I apologize. I'm a little nervous. I mean, just standing up here, you know, really, I, I coach in high school, okay? I, uh, I coach in Division II, and really nobody wanted me in Division I, so I went from Division II to the NFL. Okay, so uh, this, is a great, this is a great thing for me. I, this is one of the greatest things in my life. You know, I've been to the Super Bowl, but no bullshit. I mean, this is important to me because uh, there's a lot of really good people that help me. Okay, I'm a linebacker. I never played O line. I was a tight end in, in high school, but I was a linebacker. And what happened is, my uh, I was a Division II coach at Texas A and I, and uh, my coach wanted to get me on the staff, and so there was a position open as an O line coach. All right, and, and really, I, I thought O linemen were pussy. I'm sorry, no offense, but that's really what I thought because I was a linebacker. I played in the USFL. Right, and I really thought that those were guys that they couldn't play defense for, for whatever reason. So I thought they were pussy. So when he first told me about it, I said, uh, Coach, uh, you know, you probably need somebody that's got more experience. I really don't want to do that. I was going to go to Texas Tech and be a GA with John Paul Young. All right, then what happened is you started looking at the money. So that was going to be a hard deal. So then I talked to Coach. I said, you know what, Coach, I, I can do that job. All right, and, and, that's, and that's where it started, okay? And, and I'm just gonna take, I, I don't wanna take away from the presentation, but just so some of you guys understand it, then what I did is I had a friend, he said, well shit, you're a linebacker coach. I had a friend, the business mate, what he told me, he said, this is what you gotta do, mom. When we start a business, when we start a business, what we do is we go out and we study, all right, four or five businesses, like the one that we wanna start up with. And what we do is, we take a little bit from each business. We take the best thing from each one. So you visit four, or you study from four or five, you take all the best things from each one of those. All right, and then you put it into your business. So that's what I did. I picked up, I, I picked out some people that I wanted to study from. I right, went back and visited them and everything. And I want to just share a couple of things that I, that I thought helped me. I remember now, I never coached in Division One. There was only one time that, that, that really somebody talked to a guy for Division One. I'll tell you about that. But when I went and studied from guys, it was always yes or no, sir. It wasn't like, well, you know what, I do it like this. Oh, yeah, okay, but I do it like that. Or it wasn't what like you meet a guy for the first time, and then, then the next day you call him, can you call so-and-so for me? I'm trying to get a job. You know, Tony Wise, and Tony's here in 1990s. Uh, Tony was coaching the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, I was at Texas A and I called Tony. I went up there to visit Tony. I, I owe Tony a lot. He taught me some things about football, but he gave me an opportunity to learn. And then he turned me on to a guy that, by the name of Joe Moore. Because I would go up and bother Tony every year, study, study. And then he said, you know what, Juan, you need to learn from Joe Moore. All right? And this is where the other story comes in was that then what I did is I go visit Joe every year, and, and I don't have time to tell you the whole story about with Joe, but uh, what I would do is I would take tape from one of my guys. And I remember sitting there with Joe, and we were watching his tape, and I said, Coach, I brought some tape from, from A&I. All right, this is probably the third year that I had gone to see him. Uh, and then he said, all right, let's put it on one. So I showed him some of my guys. Now, from some of those guys, four of those guys played in the NFL. I think uh, one played for six, one played for eight, another one played for ten, and another one still playing. All right, when he looked at that tape, he said, Juan, you need to be coaching Division One." Right, I don't know if Tony remembers, but we were watching that tape in his room. He walked out of his room and walked and walked to his office, and I followed him, and he called Tony White. All right, and there was a job open at SMU. He picked up the phone. And this is no lie. Tony, Tony, and Tony will remember this, I think. And he called Tony and says, Tony, we gotta get Juan a job in, in Division One. That's some usual, you know, you know Rossley, call him, call him for Juan. Alright, I never asked Coach for anything like that. Alright, now I didn't even get an interview and it didn't happen, okay? But what I'm trying to get to you guys, when you guys go and study for me, don't ask them for anything. Because then you become like everybody else. You know, I have guys call me in my office and that you know, that are Hispanics and say, Juan. How'd you do it? Could you know? How'd you? I said, oh, man, that turned me off because that's not the way it is. Don't ask for anything, you know? And when you go study, listen, even though you do it another way, all 
I listen to what they're trying to teach you. And you know what? Then all of a sudden, I, how Bresnahan, how, how Bresnahan, I go every year and study from him. And what he said, after two years, he says, Juan, you need to go study. This is the next thing that I want you to do. I want you to study for power of money. He does it a little different than I do. But I want you to learn from him, Howard Munn. So he directed me. I would go up and stay with, with Tom Bresnahan. At that time, oh, they're, they're losing in the Super Bowl. They went to four straight Super Bowl. I'm staying at his house for a whole week. Okay, and then now he's turned because I was just paid attention. Listen, yes sir, no sir. Didn't ask for nothing, nothing. All right, and all of a sudden those guys end up taking care of you just because they know that you want to learn. And those are, those are some things that I think will help you. But I, I see guys come up sometimes visit. Oh, well, you know what? I do it like this. I'm like, okay, but shit, show me how you do it. Because now you know what? I ain't going to tell you shit. You know, you know, those are the things that are important. All right, and I know some of you guys have said, well, you know what? I'm in a Division two school, and there's a lot of Division two uh, coaches here and Division three coaches. I want to make more money. I made $32,000 at, at A&I. I'm not going to tell you how much I make now, but I, I, I make a good living. All right? And you said, well, how am I going to do it? Well, I had the same problem. You know what I said to myself? I said, you know what? What I want to do is I want to make my guys the best. And if my guys are the best, somebody going to take care of me. All right? I, it's going to happen. Because it's depressing. You're sitting there, and you know you're, you're, you're doing a good job. You can see it on tape. And then all of a sudden, it's not happening. Well, I just say, you know what? And four of my guys went to the NFL. All right? The same thing happened in the NFL. We get into all this salary stuff. We want to make as much as another guy. You know what? If you take care of your business and don't worry about anything else, make your players a bet. I'm going to tell you, somebody will take care of you. All right? Somebody will take care of your players a bet. But another thing that before we start, another thing I don't understand is, now I'm in the NFL, and they said, well, that's a Division II player. He don't have no technique. I, I feel like saying, bullshit. I'm a Division II coach. What do you mean, you know, I'm using the same shit I used when I was at A9 to coach my guy at, at Philadelphia. See, I don't understand why Division III, Division II, one double A does not look like Division I. All right, and when you look at the same player, when I turn on a tape of Division Two or One Double A, it should look. If you're teaching the right fundamentals, it should look the same. You know, really. Anyway, uh, Division One guys, shit, we beat their ass up too. We say this guy got no technique coming from wherever school it comes. The same shit in the NFL. But I'm just saying, it should look the same. It's all about fundamentals. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Now, it's uh, what I want to do is I'm gonna show you some clips too, and then I'm gonna show you the drill. All right, Howard Munn just last week said, you know, guys like to come up in clinics and talk a bunch, a bunch of, about a bunch of drills, and then you never see it on tape. And Joe Moore, if I came up here and, and, and full job with a bunch of bullshit, I know Joe Moore would be pissed off like a son of a guy. So I want to teach you the fundamentals of pass protection. I'm going to tell you now, if you do this wherever you're at, I don't care if it's high school, Division three, Division two, one double A, Division one. Your guys will look good. I'm telling you, they'll look good. All right, and, when, and if they're Division two, people are gonna want to bring them into camp. All right, now the first thing in our place that we do, all right, we're gonna throw the football. All right, and and people say, well, don't you want to run it? I want to do what Coach Reed wants to do. Coach Reed is a hell of a coach. All right, he's my boss. If he tells me to go through that wall, I'm going to go through that wall. And even if I can't make a hole, he tells me to go through it again, I'm going to do it. So if Coach Reed wants to throw the football, I'm going to throw the football. Now, there's some things that I'm going to stick into that. All right. First thing being is, we're always going to use our hands. Okay? That's the first thing. All right. You're not going to see our guys. Now, sometimes we make mistakes. I'm not going to do that. My guys are not going to do that. My guys, their hands are going to be inside. Thanks to Tony. Tony Wise taught me that. All right? And forever, I'm not scared to tell anybody who I learned that shit from. You know, and all the things. Tony Wise taught me how to use his hands. All right? He taught me how it's done. You know, and I hope I do a good job here with this, Coach. But look at the left tackle. That's how you use your hands. You see how they're inside? All right, you see the hand carriage? All right, you see what's happening, okay? 
first thing that people would say was, shit, he's a, he's a pro bowler. Yeah, pro bowler with me. Never had any other coach except me. All right, well, let's look at a free agent. Left guard, free agent. It means that nobody drafted him. It means that he's for the football. And I love to throw a football because that's what my boss wants to do. All right, but I know all you guys say, well, he's full of shit. But running the football is how you become physical. Mitch back there from Minnesota, they do a great job. They're physical. They run the football. Well, you know what? Juan Castillo in Philadelphia is physical, and we throw the football. All right? Damn right we're physical. And my guys know that they're going to be physical. All right? Now, here, right tackle. All right? He's been with me for uh, seven years. Okay. All right? He was a free agent. We paid him good money. Uh, he's supposed to be like that. Free agent here. Did not get drafted. All right, both helmets are off the ground. That's being physical. Is it like Mitch at Minnesota? He's damn right it is. All right, it's being physical. In pass protection, left guard. Not a first round draft choice, free agent. All right, the next thing is we're gonna play square, okay? You guys hear that term all the time, square. When we, I mean, that's important to us. When Bill Callahan was at the Raiders, he would always, Bill and I worked together at Philadelphia. He's a head coach now in Nebraska. All right, he would always tell me, Al Davis would walk by the line, and the only thing Al Davis would say, they swear, they swear, they swear. Well, shit, you know, that's really pretty important. All right, all my guys, the way we set, we try to stay square. Look at the two tackles. Square. All right, we're trying to play square. All right, so we have a chance. See the tackles? You want to play square. Here's a guard on a three technique. You can see shoulders are square. We don't turn our shoulders. All right, now you say, well, shit. All those guys, they played for Juan for a while. Free agent. Just got him. Uh, had maybe uh, five days of work with him. Free, uh, free agent. Didn't get drafted. All right? Really only had a, free, uh, a few guys. Uh, to go see shit, he didn't even have an agent, but a hell of an athlete. Let's see, if I didn't tell you that he was a college free agent, you'd say, damn, this guy looks pretty good. Watch this shit. Look at that left hand. Now, you can't tell me that don't look pretty damn good right there. Now, that guy didn't get drafted, so he's not a star, supposedly. Oh, by the way, Division two play. Division two play. <coughs> All right, finish. All right, now, I didn't show you any clips downfield. All right, because that's easy. That's understood. But I want to show you here is just in the line when you get beat sometimes. All right, that's Big Sean. Hell of a player. Hell of an athlete. All right, shit, he didn't read the ET correctly. All right, but now, watch him finish. All right, because he finished, the quarterback didn't get hit. So those are the things. Those are the things that we talk about that are very important for us. All right, now, now we start the fundamental. All right, the first thing that, uh, that we do is posture. All right, you guys hear that. I hear it all the time in the NFL. Well, you know what? This guy can't bend. You know what? This guy's got uh, ankles or stiff or he's stiff. Okay, all right. I really don't understand all that stuff, to be honest with you. Okay, I'm a linebacker. All right, I just know this. So when I, when I talk to you guys, remember, it's coming from the defensive side. Well, I said, well, now, okay, you want the guy to bend, but shit, that, ain't, that shit ain't natural, is it? Well, it's not natural. So what do you got to do? You got to find a drill to teach them how to bend. All right, and for me, everything is muscle memory. All right, muscle memory. I just do it over and over and over. Joe Moore, over and over and over. Pete Jenkins, I learned that from the defensive side. Do it over and over. All right, you say, okay, what is posture? All right, what we're going to do is we're going to slide for 20 yards. We're gonna, this is a power step here. All right, now, in this thing, there's a lot of things that I, that I coach. I'm, I may be a little different than some people is. I never want both feet off the ground. All right, I always want one foot on the ground. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and step drag, step drag. You can see now. I'm sorry, guys. Remember now, I'm a linebacker. 
So I, I don't understand that. I don't understand that. All right? It's probably a pretty good deal, but I don't understand that. I just know this, that my feet are going to be close to the ground so I can change directions if I have to. So I'm not going to pound the ground. I'm not going to pound the ground. I'm not going to start the motorcycle. I'm going to keep my feet low to the ground. I'm going to, give, I'm going to have one foot on the ground all the time. I'm going to be in a good knee bit position. Well, now, all right, when he goes that far, now I'm going to have some, some guys help me uh, demonstrate here. All right, just help. Just bear with me. I'm trying to look for it. Uh, come on. Uh, you want to help me? All right? And just so you get the feel, okay, what I want you to do is just imagine you're a left side guy and you're going to power step. And I want you to go all the way down to where Mr. Gilman is. Just work it here, just like this. Step drag, step drag. All right, I'm going to make sure his shoulders are back. I'm going to make sure he's stepping and dragging. And I want him to be in that knee bend position. All right, all the way. All the way down. Pretty elementary drill, man. It's, it's funny. All right, drag that foot. Drag that foot. There you go. Step drag. Step drag. Step drag. Step drag. All the way down to the end. All right, now, tell me what burns. Quads. And what up? Is that it? Okay. All right? All right, now, I just want you to get a feel. I want you to get a feel. Come here, big man. I know you probably played the position. All right? Same thing. All right, now, you're a left side guy. Take it all the way down. Yeah, dead drag. Okay, now, we're working it. Shoulders are back. I want to get used to having a good hand carry. I'm ready to strike, just like a boxer. All right, take it on down. Step drag. Step drag. Step drag. Don't pound that foot. Step drag. All right, now what happens is, <coughs> ready to punch. All right, now what I'm doing is, I'm training them to be in that position. All right, I'm training them to be in that position. All right, because it's not a natural thing. All right, it's good. All right, it's not a natural thing. Now, that's common sense. The thing about it is, we probably don't do that. I don't see too many people doing that. All right, pretty simple. So what we do is, we end up working it so it becomes natural for the kid. Uh, this is a, he was drafted in the sixth round uh, last year. This is just a shot, of, I just make him go a little faster. So we do it about three or four times. This is a kid from Delaware State, free agent. Started at center last year, eight games, gonna be a hell of a player. I think he had two places he could go to. But back then he was about 355, now he's just 330. Step drag, but you can see that we're working from the hash to the sideline. It's about 20, 25 yards. All right, now, I'm going to work on staying square. All right, again, it's going to be 20 yards. Now, we go right from that drill to this drill. All right, you can see here what we're trying to do with Sean. And Sean's shoulders are square. This is a guard. All right, now, we don't really kick out at a 45. We bring our second step back and over. But we're just trying to stay square. But again, you can see that. Over and over, we're teaching the kid how to do what? Bend. Not a natural position. I don't understand, like I said, I don't understand what people say, well, he can't bend. Well, shit, teach him how to bend. All right, correct him. Uh, this is a kid from uh, Saginaw. This is a kid from uh, Saginaw. This is Todd Herman right here. All right, now, well, see, what helped me too is, all right, you said, well, damn, boy, he, I can tell he's a linebacker coach. He hasn't said anything about holding his weight inside. I don't have to because he's dragging his inside foot. What happens when you drag your inside foot? Shit, hold his weight inside. All right, but if I shuffle, where's all my weight? Outside. And you can see all the things that McNally talks about and about holding your weight when you shift, but by dragging that foot, it just makes it a little easier. All right, you say, you know what? God, that's not a big deal. Here's a big deal. You got to find time to do that during the season. You got to do it in the off season. That's the big deal. Now, I'm going to fast forward through some of this stuff. I got carried away and put too much stuff on there. All right, now, during the season or mini camp, all right, I got to do everybody. Now, this is what uh, Coach Wiley taught me about the way I line them up so I can get everybody going. So now, <laughs> again, I'll be uh, real, real quick. I know, I know you guys know Mr. Gilman. You know, I want to thank Mr. Gilman now because when I was at Texas a and Mr. Gilman took care of me. He didn't have a lot of money. So every time when I bought a couple of sandbags, he would always throw in one for me. So I just 
want in front of everybody, I want to just thank him. He's really helped me out. We buy the sandbags from, from uh, Mr. Gilman. Now, I got a lot more to drill with. I love the sandbag. And then you'll see there's a couple of reasons. All right, here, again, we're working on posture here with the sandbag. The sandbag with the sandbag, there's a couple of things that the sandbags do, and I'm going to show you a drill, another drill here after this one. But what happens with the sandbag, when we slide, when you, when you saw us working our, our posture, there's none of this. Because I'm not ready to do what, man? Strike. I'm not ready to punch. All right, so what the sandbag does, the sandbag teaches me to bend a little bit. And now what my guys find out is, man, I can go fast without doing all this shit. All right, so it teaches them to hold their hands in this position. So it really helps me a lot. And we do the sandbags during the season. Now I use different weights. You can tell that the only two guys that got black bags are my two tactics. They've been with me for a while. So the red bags there are 75. The one John has, running, the one running has, I think is, I think is like 45 pounds, right? Mr. Gilman, something like that. It's a lot of I take it easy on those guys. But you can see, I'm just doing full work here all right, with the sandbag. This was this was our mini camp uh, last weekend. So that you got to find a place to do the drill. You got to find a, a place to teach them how to bend, so that they get strong. They develop those muscles. All right, now full work. Now this is something I do more in the off season. All right, here's a sandbag. All right, what I'm trying to do is we're trying to go fast. This is full work. I'm trying to work on the full work. But again, with them dragging their inside foot, you can see that they're working fast. They're holding the sandbags and really. The sandbag is so they don't, they don't do all that. And they, they, get, they get confidence that they can really slide, slide quickly without all that gyration from their hands. So we just go three yards. All right, we do it with a sandbag. All right, then, then we just take the sandbag off. All right, you can see here, the natural uh, shifting of the weight just by dragging his foot. Now, what you're going to see is, what I want you to do is, when you leave this place, I want you to say, man, all these drills, I saw it in the tape. And you know what? They're all fluid. They all look smooth. All right, they all look pretty. Here's Todd. You can see the shifting of the weight just naturally because he's dragging that foot. All right, this is Trey. This is my tackle. He don't count, but he's only had one coach. In, in, the, in the NFL, and that was me. All right, now, mirror drill. All right. All right, look, look at our 77 here. That's not a bad hand there, okay? But watch how he's sliding with the guy. Now, look at this, because you're going to see, I do the mirror drill, it's a little different. All right, you can see how he's sliding with him, boom, inside, back outside. Let's see right here, I think this is Sean here. Not Probably not as good a picture, but... You see him fit his hands, you see how he dances, slide inside, slide back outside, back inside, that's the big man, he don't move that good, but you see him moving around. All right, now, here's 61, all right, he was a seventh round draft pick, all right, but he's got some ability, Ohio State guy, you see him, he fits his hands, we try to punch and grab, you see him slide, moving around, moving around. All right, here's another shot. Let's see who this is. Up. All right, I think this is Artis again. Oh, you know what? We're, this is not even this is not even the punch clip, but you can see this is what Tony Wise taught me right there. Man, look at that left guard. All right, Tony Wise sitting right there. You want to learn about punching? Tony Wise is the guy that you asked about. Now watch him slide. Boom, slide around. I'm gonna show you what. When we, see, I got carried away. I had a whole day to work on the tape, and I did not want to embarrass uh, Coach Wiley. I wanted to do a good job for Coach Wiley. Again, look at, look at the left guard. Look at his hands. But this is more in the mirror. See him slide to the outside. Now watch him slide back to the inside. All right, so now he said, okay. Oh, man. All right, now put this one in here. This is a good, nice little shot. But we incorporate this in the mirror, mirror drum. Look at uh, Sean here. All right, the key in pass protection, naturally, is you want to keep separation. In the run game, all right, you want to be into the guy. But you can see here, Sean said, uses his hand, watch the guy spin. You can see him working his hands, trying to keep the guy away from him. All right, so now, whoa. All right, let me go to the drill here. Sorry about that, I, put a, I probably should have put 
less uh, shots, but all right, so now this is I do the mirror drill a little different. I know you guys have seen the mirror drill lateral. All right, I don't do that like that. To me, that's good, but that's off season stuff. It, it's not realistic to me. What did you guys see our guys when they fitted their hand? You saw him locked up, you saw him work at an angle, then you saw him work back where? Back inside, back at an angle. When I was Tom Bresnahan, when Tom Bresnahan did his mirror drills, he did them at an angle, at power step, at an angle. So then, what I what I do is, give me two guys that, that want to come up here, and I'll show the drill for everybody. All right, so then, I'm just going to work the same thing here. What we do here, all right, come on up, and then you can do it. All right, all we do is, <laughs> you're going to get in, in a football position, just like everybody else. All right, now, you're going to fit up. I'm the defensive guy. All right, I do that in the run game, but in the pass protection, I do it like that, because I have more surface. All right, then, all right, then what I do is, the defensive guy is going to work inside, and he's going to power step, and he's going to try to keep separation. Go ahead. Boom. All right? He's strong with his inside hand. Then the defensive guy attacks the outside shoulder. Now he's strong with his outside hand. But you see how he slides in the angle? Now we go back inside. Back outside. Back inside. Back outside. All right, now here's what happens. This is why this drill's good. Yes. I tell my guys, when we do the mirror drill, we're going to stop the leaning. When we learn how to do the mirror drills correctly, none of my guys will lean. All right, that's part of the mirror drill. They'll learn how to keep separation without leaning. That's the key. Plus, it's realistic because you're working inside, back at an angle, inside, back at an angle. We tell them, when you go inside, don't give any ground. All right, go ahead. Do it again. Now, you'll be the defense guy. Again. All right, here we go. Ready? Go. All right. Get down, get down, get down. Shoulders back. Come on, there. Back inside. All right, stop. You know what? You think it looks easy, man, but here's what happens. If a defensive guy does a good job, if a defensive guy does a good job and leaves, now, I'm only, I'm only 230. Now, remember, when we go against each other, they could be 320 pounds, 330. So he's got to keep the separation. All right, without leaning, holding off a 330-pound guy. All right, and the defensive guy is working as hard as he can. We we'll look at it. I got a few of them on here, and then I just switch it off. I just stay here. All right, come on, we get so the people can see. All right, you can see here. All right, now Sean's going up against this guy's 330 pounds. So what we're working with Sean here. Keep your shoulders back. We usually throw a spin in there. There's artist. Back out. Back in. Back out. Keep your shoulders back. This is in camp. All right, this is my center. He's a free agent, too. From backside shot. You can see we're going at an angle. We're trying to keep your shoulders with power step. All right, now the next thing we do here, I'm going to go past this. We try to knock the hands down and stuff like that. We end up having, I think that you can do a lot of different things with this if you want it yourself. But this is one I think is, is very important here, where we just work on the spin, and we work on keeping, the, the key here is when they spin, keep separation. Now you hear a defensive guy, Jeremy over there, Pete Jenkins, they want to be empty. They want to be up against your body. They don't want you to have them away. But what we want to do is we want to keep separation. So no, I just teach them how to do it. With, again, keep your shoulders back. So they're not leaning. But see, you know what you say, oh, man, that's easy. That's easy. The thing is, for it to become natural, what do you got to do? You got to do what? Over and over. And the problem is, is all your offensive coordinators, they want to run all these plays. So shit, you're trying to work on plays and not working on fundamentals. All right, that's the problem. That's the key. All right, now, punch progression. All right, and really, what I should do is I should stop and let Tony take over this phase right here, man. All right? And I'm just telling you, the reason I'm making it, and I hope folks don't get embarrassed, is I really mean it sincerely from my heart. I make a good living with my family, all right? And it's because those people that taught me did a good job. Bob Wiley, you know, Tony. And I want him to know that, that, I, that I'll never forget because I'm giving my family something that I didn't have, all right? 
I so understand when you say, damn, those eagles, they do a hell of a job hunting. Just remember. Damn, that's Tony Wise, the guy that said yes now. That was that the Cowboys that developed that offensive line when they were with Jimmy Johnson. All right, let's look at the left half. Boom, okay? That, look, that kind of looks pretty. All right, now, you know, we say, well, he's a first rounder. Here's Shark. You see where the hands are, man? Real tight. I mean, I don't think none of them are doing this. All right, let's see now. Let's see if we can get a free agent here. All right, here's a, this is a free agent. This is a seventh round pick, so let's see what they look like. See if I'm full of shit. Let's look at him, okay? Not too bad. All right, now, his left hand, I really don't like that. You know, you see what he did, but he ended up managing, getting it back inside. Okay, left guard, free agent. Now, you see, this is a different little set. We're trying to stay square. Bam. That's not bad for a kid that nobody liked him. He didn't get drafted. All right, our center, Hank. Not bad with his hands here. He's a free agent. I'm not going to talk about Ryan because he, he was a, he, we pay him a lot of money. He's supposed to be good. I think this is uh, Trey. We go through. That was, uh, let's see, I'm trying to find the artist again here. Look at the left guard, left tackle. All right, now, I'm going to take you to the progression, okay? Here's what I think it is, is important. All right, it's not the drill. All right, I don't think it's a drill. I think it's just the thing that you have to do what? You have to punch. You have to punch, all right? It doesn't matter what drills you come up with. It, this is not, you know, to me it's, I gotta get a lot of reps of punching. If I don't punch, I'm not gonna get good. Now this is a, this is supposedly a punch, it's got some of this stuff, you know. And to me, I just wanna punch. I wanna punch as much as I can without going in. On a, on a regular set. I mean, you guys got a lot of drills. That's not the key. The key is you have to punch. All right, we practice during the season. We we're going we to play the Super Bowl, which we lost on a Friday. We, still, we went out 20 minutes before practice on a Friday before the game, and we went through a punch progression. All right, now, again, I'm not going to show you the stud, but then you, you'll say, well, shit, if I had that guy, it'd be easy. This is a free agent. This is a kid from West Texas. All right? All right, all we're working and you say, well, what about the punch? Tell me about the punch. Really, I wish I could refer to Tony now. All I know about the punch is I, I want to punch with the heel of my hand. All right? I want, to, I want to make sure that the punch is from the tricep and the lat. I don't want to use the shoulder. Okay? And I want to punch with long arm, not short arm. I don't want the hands up against my body. All right? And I'm different with my hand placement. I'm not, a, I'm not really tight. I want to stick both hands on, on the outside number or on the number. I'm a little wider with my hands, and you'll see. But all we're doing, we're just switching around. I think this, I saw Coach Wiley, he had punch. You know, to me, just punch. But this is just to change it up, change it up. All right, so another way to do it. This is a kid, this is a free agent from uh, West Texas. Didn't get drafted. Again, this is quick punch. I mean, just make up whatever you want, but you can see that. They're not punching with their shoulder. They're punching with their triceps. They're not leaning. They're punching with long arms. All right, same thing. It's a kid, a free agent, free agent from New Mexico. Look at his shoulders are back. All right, now this is my whole group. Now, when we have this sled here that's pretty nice and we don't have to hold the shield. And all we're doing is, this is we do this before practice. What we're going to do is we're going to punch. And now I know that it's muscle memory. Again, muscle memory. Do it over and over and over so it become natural. I'm going to go fast here. These are just some other deals, but I don't think that's such a big deal. As, all right, now, I just got to show you this. This is a, this is a Joe Moore drill. It's a timing punch. I think it's a hell of a drill. 
Uh, all it is is we're going to have that defender run as fast as it can. It should be coming harder. We're going to take a step back, and we're just trying to stop that charge. All right? And we just do it three times. The only thing that I've done different here is at the end, uh, I just try to grab the back of his pad, or I, or I try to clean the hand just so it gets a feel. I want to stick that outside hand. Sometimes you guys see your guy, well, I'm scared if they knock my outside hand down. And they get all of a sudden, they don't want to punch with that outside hand, or they become one-hand punchers. You know, our D-line coach told me, I said, he said, you guys want to punch with one hand, take them in the bench press and tell them you're going to bench, see if they bench with one hand. So that's the same thing. When you punch with one hand, it's just like going to and bench pressing with one hand. You can't do that. All right, then we go a little two on one. All right, now here, the, the thing about this is, like I said, it's not the drill, man. You guys can come up with a drill. The thing to me is punch. Punch, punch. All right. All we're doing here is we're working inside, back out, inside, back out, just so we try to work our footwork into the in, into the drill, into the progression. I'm probably going a little fast, but all right. Now, full rush. Progression. All right. So you see, you see the way I'm trying to break it down, man. The first thing I know that you got to be able to bend, keep the shoulders back. Then the footwork, about the way you slide, is very important. Staying square. All right. Then the punch is very important. Rear drills. Rear drills keep you from leaning. All right. Which is a tough thing. I mean, you guys see, you guys see some of your players when they're overextended, they're really pushing up. You know what? When you see that, shame on you. I'm telling you, shame on you. That's your fault. You know, don't blame the kid. Well, he can't. That's bullshit. Those mirror drills will take care of that. So you should never see that. All right, that's inexcusable as a coach. You know, that's on you, man. All right, that's on you. All right, because there's drills to correct that. Leaning shouldn't be a problem. Punching shouldn't be a problem. You know, and I'm saying, shame on you. When I look at it on tape, I say, that coach not doing very good job. Because I know I was in a Division II school, and that shit didn't look like that. All right? And I'm doing the same drill. Basically, Coach uh, Tony White showed me those drills or that thought process. My first year as offensive line coach at Texas A&M. All right? Now, bull rush. Now, this this is something that I learned from Howard Munn. Like I said, I'm not scared to tell you what I learned the stuff from. All right? That's the way it is. And the, the thing is that when you learn it, you got to make sure that you're productive as a coach. And then they'll take care of you. All right? Now, what Howard does... All right, you can see here now, for a change here, this is why he got in trouble. You can see that the left tackle missed with his left hand. All right, not a very good job. All right, but you can see this is, again, uh, Howard calls it baby hops. Okay, shit, I wish it was bad, but he had to really go, I mean, he had to jump back about a yard and a half. The only thing that, that I know from, from what Howard taught me in doing it is that when Howard taught me this, Howard said, you know what, this is something that happens naturally. You see it on tape, or we see it on tape. All right, so then what he did is he just built it into a drill. All right, and you said, well, what is it? Well, what you're doing is by hopping, when he hits you, what we're saying is we're never going to use our face. I, I know you guys talk about well, we're going to butt him. Well, and, and I know our guys, if we butt, if we butt our defensive guy, shit, they're going to work our edge and we're in a lot of trouble. So we're not going to use our face. We're going to go ahead and set and we're going to punch just like a normal set. Then if we feel a bull rush, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hop. All right, the hop, what the hop does is drop my hip. All right, so that I can get down. Everybody talks about bull rush. What are you going to do? Well, you got to sink your hip. All right, and walk it back. But well, we don't walk it back. We hop. All right, and that, what that does is drop the hip. You probably won't see it as many. I didn't have a lot of clips. I got some big old guys. All right, you only uh, basically just see uh, artists here. <coughs> There you go right there. 
low leg with his hand, boom, but you see the hop. Now he had to hop twice there. Again, you can see a lot of the shots are of artists. You know, some of the other guys are pretty big, so we don't we don't use it as much. And I think what's happened to me on this one, here's the artist again. What's happened to me on this one is I think I gotta do a better job with the drill. We don't do this drill as much as I should. Every every time we would work past for I should do it. I don't do it all the time. And I think that's probably why I'm not as good as I should be, like Howard, when I watch some of Howard take. Now, I do it. There's a little different thing that I do with it but, than Howard does, but again, now, here, that with his right hand, but you can see him hop a little bit. It's always a left guard, it seems like. Now, let's see, this is, yeah, again, another shot. That was a quick one now. So here's the way we do it. All right? We just start, when we're in off season, all we do is we just fit up. All right, defensive players is going to push on them. I want to be careful, and you can see us hop. Now, the different thing that we do, I, I think, now, Bob, you can correct me on that, but I think uh, Coach, uh, Coach Mano just hop. What I've done is, is, you know, I thought, well, you know what? When we hop, it drops his hips, and then we're going to sink our hips. So we're kind of, we kind of use both things. We use the way the regular, uh, most people, some people use it, and then I put hours together, and then, you know, it seems like that would be a good deal. You can see how he's hopping, but when he's hopping, he's also dropping his hip or sinking his hip. All right, kind of like doing the bob thing. All right, so then now, now this guy, that's a big dude. This guy's probably not going to get bull rushed anyway, but he still works the drill. All right, this is a little behind shot, and then we just take it through a progression. You know, we slide just so it becomes natural. Now, we do it with a shield. Slide, slide, and then bull rush. But again, at least they understand what we're trying to do. Like I said, I probably need to do a better job with it with, uh, with our guys, and then we come out of it. You know, we'll go just a regular bull rush. We work an edge, and then we bull rush, make them hop twice or three times, and then he comes out of it so we can slide. But on a bull rush, we're not going to use our face. All right, we're going to punch with our hand. Uh, you know what, Coach? Uh, what uh, uh, those bags? What Coach Reed told me he says, Juan, you know, you do all that stuff, but they're trying to grab the bag. You know, once you just get a bag with, where you strap it around your neck, you strap it around your waist, you know, and do that. And I remember Tony had that too. Tony had it. With, I think it was around your head, right, Coach? You know, so the only difference was we just strap it around our waist so it can fit up against your body. And really, we just—I'm sure that's something that Mr. Gilman can make. But we just had a guy from, there's a guy there that Mr. Hatfield Mitch, he got somebody to do every, you know, he just sees it. And he, he had somebody there from uh, from Philadelphia just just make it for us. It's a pretty good deal because I, I, I wasn't able to put on our drills, but there's a lot of drills that we do where we're trying to use our hand so the guys get used to that. Well, now with that shield up against your body, all right, and strapped up, all right, you're just using a protective thing. Now, there's another thing that, that uh, Mr. Gilman tried to, uh, try to uh, try to make for me those buddy bands. You see those? Uh, I think they're in this little deal we use so that now you can punch, but the hands are free to be able to make any moves that you, that you like. Let's see here. Uh, let me go to camp, and then, and then all of a sudden here. Now this needs to be a little faster, but now we set it versus a three technique. So you see, we go head out, we go cross, we go outside alignment. Just so they get that feel what it's going to be like. All right, here's a head up alignment. This is during camp. This is uh, this is my uh, my free agent here. Well, you can see, you can see the hip when he when he when he hops. You can see the hip drop. Makes it easier. And really, when you see it on tape, man, sometimes it happens naturally. Now, all these are not perfect, but this is this is 
a head up alignment, and all we want to do is pick the inside away. So we're going to take our initial set, and I'm always going to have them freezing, and then I'm going to have them slide. So they, they can, so we're working on the footwork again. You can see the footwork. You can see the set. All right, it's probably too big. Again, we're trying to get better, but you can see him step drag, step drag. See the thing that that I think is big here is one foot's always on the ground, and we're not we're not picking up that foot very high. We're always low to the ground. And then what we'll do is now we'll go outside. You know, you take it away. All right, now we're going to react outside. So we get an inside move, outside move. Then we go here. Here's my tackles in, in uh, camp. So that you see that we do do it in camp. You say, well, is this an off season? I think the off season is key. You can teach your guys how to pass protect in the off season. All right, that's off season is critical for me. But you still have to work some of the drills. All right, during training camp or mini camp. All right, you can see here again. This is what wild stop me. So you can be efficient. All right, here's my tackles. All right, taking an inside step. But we're different with our tackles. So I'm not going to talk about sets. That's not what I'm trying to do here, but you see that. All right, now, here's a crotch. We're just trying to stay balanced with a crotch. You know, some people take two steps. Again, but again, it's muscle memory. Just do it over and over and over. Now, crotch, and he reacts outside. Here's my tackle. You know, like I said, we take, we set different with our tackle. We're going to be square. All right, this is a guy that's uh, probably his inside foot is on, on his outside foot or right off. We're just going to take a two-step set. step. Set now uh, straight back, but again, I'm training his feet. You can see one, two, boom, the guy goes inside. All right, one, two, one, two, the guy goes outside. All right, now this is a three technique. We're going to take a two step set on the three technique. The guy goes inside. Again, footwork, initial set and footwork. Here it is again. Now it's a three technique. You can see, again, we set it a little different. We don't set it at an angle. All right, we're going to stay square. It's, I call it a back and over step. All right, it's back and over, a back and over step to try to keep us square. But we set the three technique, then we keep going. All right, now, this is a tough one. This is one Wiles taught me on. You know, you said, boom, the guy goes inside right now. You try to replace. Now, this one, sometimes you say, well, that's bullshit. You know what I found out with that one is? There's two ways to do it. All right, you're either going to replace it like that, and your guy can do it. So what I do is, I let them do it naturally. When we set that alignment, we work it. And then some guys can do it. Some guys can actually step here and replace. Some guys can't. So then what I say, well, if you can't do it, then when you sit out there, then when you step with your inside foot, it's got to be a little step so you can keep your base. Naturally, all you got is going pass protection. Having a base is key. I mean, that's it's critical. very important. That's something else you can talk about for a long time. Again here, this is just Big Sean, just trying to work our footwork just so it becomes natural muscle memory so we can do it so they don't have to think about it. All right, this is my tackle taking a set, a vertical set here for us, reacting, I tell them, okay, now make believe the guy goes inside. All right, here's your vertical set, boom, you set to your point, now make believe the guy goes inside. Again, just forward, these are, this is a kid from USC, all right, he's supposed to be good, he's a second round draft choice. All right, this is my kid from uh, West Texas that's a free agent. Now, I'm going to tell you, now, he don't look, shit, there's not much difference there. All right, this, this is Trey. Now, now, this is something that's different. All right, everybody does it different now, okay? <clears throat> this comes from, uh, it's a West Coast stuff, meaning that the guy I learned this from is Tom, Tom Lovat. All right, Coach Reed with Coach Lovat. All right, and, and uh, these are short sets. It's on three step. We throw a lot of three steps. All right, so we're different. We try to we step up the field. All right, we say that this is we call it. It's going to be one two. Cut the crotch. You want to reduce the distance and you want to fit your hands. So that's this is what we're doing here. We're working on our right, short set. Now I know some of you guys probably get and say, "Damn, here he goes again." He said he got this from here. He, shit, I'm not I'm not scared, man, or, or embarrassed to say I learned from people. You know, I'm still learning from people. Now, there's some things that you end up doing on your own, but I'm going to be honest, because those people help me a lot, and I'm always going to tell everybody what I'm learning. But what they can't do for me is they can't teach that shit to my players, and they can't teach you or help you be productive. you got to do that shit on your own. All right? But just, just bear with me when I say I, I learned it from this guy. I learned it from because I want to give them credit. I want them to feel good that, hey, they taught me how to do this. All right? So now this is a short set. All right, this is what we're doing here is, this is a head up alignment. 
All right, so what we're doing, we're taking the inside of the way, we're stepping the inside part of his feet. You can see that. The thing about this is it keeps you, it keeps your face. Oh, I'm a little different. Howard's a little different. You guys, two years ago, Howard talked about this. He's a little different than I am. And other guys are different. All right, this is the way. I like it like this. I understand the other way. I just want to, I always want to be in a good football position. I want to have a base. All right, so that I can slide. Well, this allows me to do that. All right, here's one, two. Now, what I'm doing again, I'm just react back inside. I take a short set, the guy goes inside. I take a short set, the guy goes outside. Boom. But what you see is over and over and over. They do it so much. Trey told me one time, I said, come on. God, dog, I can do this in my sleep, coach. I said, shit. That's, I, mean, I said, that's great. Let's do it again. That proves the point. I, I'm getting somewhere with you after about nine years. All right, we do the same shit over and over. Here's something. Master the drill. Don't be sticking in a new drill just to stick in a new drill. Master the drill. When they master the drill, then they can convert that to the game. All right, master the drill. Then they'll convert it to, to the game. All right, now here's my tackle. All right, there's these short set. The guy's head up, so he's going to go ahead and short set and react inside, react outside. We work a little. When he goes outside, we're a little different when the guy goes outside. All right, this is a crotch guy. Again, we're always going to, sometimes what you don't want is for him to hop. I want to take one step at a time. Reduce the distance. I want to step at the guy. And then just react outside. <coughs> Boom. Step. He's a little wide. You can see he's a little wide. All right, there's Trey. Trey's a little wide. Trey's not used to do this one. Normally we go back one, two. All right, there he is. He's a little tight. You can see that he steps up the field. But what you're seeing there is that he always has a what, man? Base. A base. All right, now, we're a little different with it. Okay, there's a three technique. Now, three technique's a little tougher. You say, you want to short set a three technique. Yeah, a guy that bull rushes us. You know, if he's just going to come into us, we'll short set him. If he's off her body, if he's off her body, well, let's see if, uh, let's see if Big Man did it right here. Okay, this is, uh, okay, here we go. If he's off her body, all right, now I'm slowing it down. This was earlier this uh, off season. All right, we take one, two, and then we go jump. Really close while he kind of like the tackles do. All right, so that's when we play a wide three technique, all right, and it's a three-step throw, and we know that he's going to work her edge, we'll take two steps to see what he's doing, and then we go ahead and jump. Same type of deal here. All right, now it's not perfect yet. Now this is Trey here. The tackles take one, two, and then go jump. All right, Trey's a little quick. I think this shot's better here. One, two, and then we try to jump him. Now he's kind of hopping there. I got to do a better job. And then he reacts inside. Here's the young guy trying to take one, two, and jump. Still not perfect. This was there in the mini camp. All right, now. Now what I did here is I just went through and we're taking our sets and we're punching. And what I did is I just kind of, I just showed a few different guys. Okay, so you say, you know, it's easy to say, well, that guy's a first rounder. Hey, this guy, well, shit, he, He's a top-notch tackle. He's a top. Well, what I did here is I just went through and showed some of the, some of the other guys, and I basically I used this year's film. You know that this year we were pretty good for five years. This year we only won six games. That's going to change, but we're not as good. So I wanted I wanted to see some of this year's film. All right, this is Ty Herman, fourth uh, fourth round pick. You can see him staying square. You can see the hands. All right, to me to me it looks effortless. All right, it looks, it looks easy. All right, here's another shot. I think this one here is set and punch. Here's Sean. You can see the different set here in the three technique. You can see them set. One, two, punch. One, two, punch, okay? Back and over. That's the set we saw on tape, okay? You saw that set. All right, here's the tackle. All right, now this, remember, this kid, last year he was a rookie, fourth round draft pick sec, uh, from a Division II school, playing left tackle. All right, here, here's another shot. Like I said, I probably got about five. I got, I got carried away with him. You know, I, I, I kind of like the kid. You can see him, uh, Coach Wise, here punching the near point. But again, look how smooth he is. And you can see that his hands are not everywhere. 
So it's not like everything that I talk about is bullshit. All right, that's that's a sandbag deal. I mean, he's having this is a pretty fast guy here. I think I think this guy probably runs four five. He makes a lot. I know he makes a lot of money. He makes more money than he does. All right, again here. All right, here he is again. You know what? And you say, well, what about that set? All right, you know what the thing is, that I said about that set is that when I talked to Howard about that set, uh, Coach Wiley, Howard said that the key thing in pass protection for the tackle, all right, was that at the junction point, all right, that's the intersection between the defensive lineman and the tackle between the quarterback and all that kind of stuff, right? He said, you want to be in a good football position. Well, I said to myself, well, you know what? What better set than to go straight back, okay? And now, at the junction point, you can see he's in a good football position. He's ready to make something happen. All right, now, here I go again. I learned that from Jim Lachey, okay? I, I don't know if you guys remember him now. Hannafin coached him, all right, but not all the guys did that. Now, when, when I, my first year there in, uh, in 95, all right, we broke down the Redskins. And Lachey, that's all Lachey would do, would go straight back, straight back, stay square, kick that. It made it look easy. I said, man, that's the way I'm going to do it one day. That's the way I'm going to do it right there. All right, here he is again. All right, let me go to another guy. Here, let's see if I can get another guy. And then I'll show, I'll show you the drills are at the end. I really got carried away with this guy. <laughs> all right, here we go. All right, now this is left tackle. Now this is this is a position. All right, that you're supposed to have a pretty good athlete. Now this is a this is my other kid. Uh, he's not with us anymore, but this is an artist. He played. You see him at guard. He was starting left guard, but he has to play left tackle at times. He has some injuries, but you can see now. now I'm gonna, I just want you. I'm going to ask you a question here, and I need you guys to answer me and help me out here. Does that look the same as the other guy? Huh? I mean, right. I mean, he's using his hand just like the other guy. Now watch. One more time there. Now that's it. Sometimes John may not use his outside hand all the time. Here's, a, here's Sean. Now, you put, there, here's your power step, like we saw in the initial steps. Now, it's probably too big. It's a good thing the guy's just trying to bull rush him. Look at his hand. Slide. See, uh, look at Trey right here. Let's see here. Not bad. He gets pushed back a little bit, but what you see is everybody's hands are where, man? Inside. Inside. All right, let's go to, to me here, I'm going to go past all this thing. I'm sorry I had to go fast, man. Here, uh, there's, there's some good clips here that. <coughs> that's Trey there, let's see here. This is Trey again. All right, this is, this is John. Teach them. 
And we keep doing, we don't even go to other shades when we start off season. All we do is I just put the guy head up and I just take a power step and I set and punch till the guys learn how to do it. So we never go to any other, we never go to any other technique till the guys learn how to set and punch. All right, then, then what we end up doing, you can see the hands are up and in, up and in. All right, then what we do is, you know, when you got, when you're in camp, you got to go pretty fast. I may go three guys, I may go one at a time, I may go three at the same time. But you can see here, you can see they all kind of look the same. Everybody's sitting and punching. All right, again. Now this is a different now. During camp, you know, I, I like to go, I, I like to go an end up technique, a crotch, and a wide alignment, inside foot and outside. So those are the three that I mainly work. Sometimes we work in inside shape, but those are the three alignments that I work. This is a wide three technique. Now here's my tackle right here. This is the left side. And you know, the tough thing is just like all you guys, you got a lot of guys, and see what I, what I end up doing is, it's a good way to fix it up. They go three times. But I look at every guy. First time I look here, second rep I look here, third rep I look over here. So I'm able to correct everybody. Now they get three reps. This is the right side here. Center. I just keep on, there's some more stuff here, but basically the same thing. Now, we, we got about five. Is there any questions, man? Yeah. Uh, you know what we try? I, I think everybody's different, you know, because it depends on, I got really tall guys. I mean, my guys are six, seven, six, eight. You know, I think probably, you know, maybe uh, some of these other guys probably do better to ask, you know. You know, you know we can talk about it when you come visit me, you know, in the training camp. Yeah, you know what we do is, and uh, what we do is that when I first started teaching a jump set to the tackle, what happened is, and, and uh, you know how sometimes you have to know what kind of three step it is. All right, there's three steps. There's a three step throw where, like in our system, Coach White knows this from Carolina. Uh, when you go three steps, and if the isolated throw is not there, they go thup thup thup. They go right back. Know, all the problem well, with that shit you can't just what happened with us initially was we're getting killed by PE. So then what we do is we take two definite steps. So my tackle will take will go back one, two. Now the defensive guy thinks it's what type of set? Vertical set. And then we'll do exactly what the guards do. We'll go step on their feet. We go jump. What that does what that does, it allows me to read what he's going to do. So that if I go back one, two, and they're running a TE, I'm able to switch off the TE. What ends up happening with us, it makes it easy, is that we go one, two. We go one, two. That defense man runs right up the field. So we don't even jump up. We keep taking a vertical set. And now what does that do for the quarterback? It opens up a big old lane. All right, so that's enough. Sometimes we let them use that set, two, on a five-step drop. You know, he'll take one, two. And then he goes get the guy. You know, you got to work it, and that because if you miss on those on those jump sets, you miss. You're in trouble. But that that's another way when I set up the shield, and my guys know they go and work on it by themselves. So they do it. Oh, see, the key to me is muscle memory. If you tell me, you say, okay, I don't know if I'm a successful coach or not. You know, but we've been to the playoff. You know, we I've been to the playoff seven out of the let's see what seven out of what ten years that I've been in the league. Okay, but I know this. You say, what's your key? If somebody asks, what's your key to success? I would say, muscle memory. All right, what Joe Moore taught me. Do it over and over and over and over again. And again, and again. And when they're standing around, we do it again. And again, you know, and it's like, oh shit, here we go again. But what happens is if it's not natural, they're not gonna do it. And really, to be honest with you, it's your fault. Let's think about this. Who's going to get fired? You go, so you better start just making it your fault anyway. Because you're the one that's going to get fired if you don't correct that or you don't make them do what they have to do. <coughs> Anybody else? Uh, yeah? Coach, was, was 
boxes that you have on the field, how, how big are they? Uh, you know, all they are is five yard boxes. Five yard boxes. You know, it's a good way, uh, Coach Wally showed me that. It's a good way so that, you know, what you're trying to do is, you're trying to be, for us, tempo is very important. Okay, and NFL is different, I guess. There's some camps, everything's slower. For us, if you ever come watch this practice, you see that practice is just like college. You know how you guys, everybody's moving, everybody runs the drill, everybody, there's nobody walking. Coach, coach wants you to go fast. That's why you shit, bang, I better go fast. And Coach Green wants me to go fast, I'm going fast. All right, but I got it taped up. I'll go three, you know. So what it does is it allows me to put guys in, in a box, and now that's the little area. Because when we do those mirror drills, sometimes we do those mirror drills. I was just showing you one. We may do three guys at the same time. But I have it on tape, so at night, you know, I mean, I like just watching the fundamental stuff. You know, I like to sit there, you know, and drink a Coke, and then just watch my guys do mirror drills and stuff like that because it's important. Full work, all that kind of stuff is very important. Anybody else? Well, I hope, I hope, I hope for, uh, you know, because I know Joe watching upstairs, you know. I hope I didn't give you any bullshit. I hope that that uh, what you saw on the drills is what you saw on the tape. And I'm sorry I have to go so fast. There's some other stuff that would have been good, but I wanted to, to go through the whole deal. But I'm telling you, man, I'm serious. If you work it like that, and you do, it doesn't have to be those drills, but you work those things, your guys will be good past the test. All right, because I know that's the way I did it at, at Texas A&I at Division II school. The same thing I'm doing now in the NFL, just like that. So I know it works. Uh, first rounder, free agent, seventh round, no different than your guy. Okay. All right, thank you, man.